Hey everyone and welcome to another Wargaming Terrain Tutorial. This week's video we're going to make some simple craters. Welcome back everyone. Now for this week's video we're just going to be using some simple cardstock here for the bases. Uh, this is just some chipboard, about 1mm thick cardboard. Uh, this is fairly firm, it should be fine for our, car, uh, for our cardboard bases. Now I'm just cutting some simple squares here. This is not any sort of, you know, real measurements here. This is going to be very simple and, and fairly just winging it here. These don't need to be perfect squares or anything. We just want to make sure that we cover the base of our crater and have a little bit of room around the sides. Uh, so to build these, you will have seen me do this in my video last week about the bunkers. Put a few craters in that hill as well. This is just using some tin foil to make the basic shape of our crater just to give it a bit of a wall and a bit of a shape that we can build it up against. Now to do this you just want to press it into a circle as you can see there and you want to fairly firmly press this down to make the shape of your crater. So you want a kind of pointy top at the top edge of the walls and a fairly flat base that you can sort of glue down onto these cardboard bases that we've made. Now to put these onto the bases very very simple. I'm uh, just going to use my fancy hot glue gun here and uh, a nice bead of hot glue all the way around the bottom of this. Uh, it doesn't need to be covering all of the tin foil here. We just want a good firm circle all the way around. No real gaps just so that we don't have anywhere where this can pull up off the base. So hot glue works fine here so long as you press it down uh, in all the edges just to make sure that there are no gaps or anything that can peel up at any stage. Uh, now I'm going to be also cutting out this uh, cardboard base just to round it off, make it a little bit more uh, natural against this crater so uh, what we're going to do is uh, just with our craft knife we're just going to bevel these edges a little bit you don't need to bevel the edges I don't think just cutting these roughly down to the same shape as our crater will work fine you'll see with the larger crater that I cut out I actually leave a little bit more of a lip around the base of the crater this is actually not a bad idea to do especially if you want to add some flocking and different things like that to match your battle mat this one, as you can see, it has roughly about a centimetre around the outside. That just allows me to add some more gravel and flocking, as I mentioned. Now, to base these, I'm just going to be using a bit of Mod Podge with some black paint here. I didn't water this one down. I would suggest, though, uh, if you are going to put a base coat on these, that uh, this, this method will work fine, but you might also want to just hit it uh, with a rattle can of matte black paint or use your airbrush to sort of give this uh, this tin foil a bit of a, a base coat just because the Mod Podge and black paint doesn't adhere real well to that tin foil so uh, you might want to give it just a, after you do that coat just give it another spray with some black uh, matte black primer. Now uh, here you can see me adding on the uh, concrete or road base for the outside of these craters so a couple of these are going to be dirt or field craters and a couple are going to be based on the road these are to go on the battle mat I made a couple of weeks ago and possibly for future battle mats I make. So all I'm doing is just making some shapes here, some rough shapes with the uh, cork board. This is just one mil thick cork board that I found at the craft shop. You can get this in rolls or certainly in a uh, A4 sheets. Now you'll notice once it's glued on there because it extends out beyond the base, it is a little bit springy and it does push the base up off the table a little bit. But we will fix that once we prime that corkboard with some uh, black paint and Mod Podge as you can see I've done there with the larger one. Now to make the mix for the gravel inside and outside of some of these craters what I'm using is the same mix I use for my battle mat. So this is just some acrylic corking, a little bit of dirt and some IPA alcohol just to thin it down a little bit. I believe you can use water in place of IPA alcohol should still work fine. Uh, what you want to do here is just mix this up into a, a bit of a paste. You don't want it to be too thick. Uh, you also want to make sure you don't make it too runny. This mix I made here was probably a little bit too runny for the, for the purpose of this. So you, if that's the case you can add in just a little bit more corking or a little bit more dirt just to firm it up a little bit. This still worked out okay but uh, as you'll see shortly and I'll point out there were just a couple of little things that popped up with this being as runny as it was. Uh, you want to get a fairly thin layer of this and spread it all throughout the inside of the crater for these ones. You'll see shortly for the uh, for the craters that are field craters, I use this all the way around on the inside and outside of the crater. Uh, this is just to help adhere some of the uh, dirt that we're going to apply shortly which will give it all that texture and the really cool look that we're going for. So just using a paddle pop stick I'm just going to press this all up to the edges 
Again, if you've got that cork board on there, you might want to make sure that you are pushing this up underneath those uh, little pieces of cork just to make sure you don't have any uh, tin foil showing through at, at any stage there. So adding a bit of this on there, I've probably applied a little bit too much onto the inside of this crater and you'll see why I say that shortly. This is just some sifted dirt from my backyard. You should be able to find something similar. I really like this stuff, it's a great color. All you want to do is just uh, fill up that crater with quite a bit extra and then just sort of pat it down so that it will adhere to that corking mix that we've made. Now as soon as you've done that, it doesn't take very long at all, you'll be able to just tip out all the excess and uh, just pour that back into your cup. So best to use a piece of paper there. Now you can see there I've got a couple of folds in, in the dirt texture. That's just from having a slightly too thick layer of the acrylic mix. Um, so uh, it may have been just a little bit too runny as well, but it wasn't a problem. I was able to just push those back down and uh, it looks fine anyway. So the next one here, I took that into account and made sure that I didn't make that acrylic mix too thick and just did the exact same process, just pressed in the dirt, tipped out the excess and straight off the bat, that one worked out fine. So uh, you just want to pat that out and make sure you get all the excess bits to fall off uh, and then you can move on to your next one. So. These are the filled craters and as I mentioned I'm going to put dirt on the inside and outside of this crater. I will be applying some flocking later but the process to get this dirt texture on is exactly the same. Just put it down on your piece of paper and cover the entire thing with the dirt and you just want to press that down again just making sure it adheres to that acrylic mix and if you've got any of those folds or, or raised areas from the thickness of the acrylic just uh, pat those down with your finger and it should be fine. Now give it a couple of hours and these should dry up pretty well. I'm just going to go around here and seal all this dirt texture in. So I'm just using a dropper with some PVA glue and water. Uh, you could use a paintbrush as well. I just find it's a little bit easier with this dropper. Uh, these are fairly cheap to buy at a craft store or a cheap shop. Uh, once those are up, it's all applied, it does look pretty bad and the glue is all white. But as you can see here, it dries up clear, sealed in all that dirt texture and we can start applying some flocking. So I'm using my cheap static grass applicator that I built a couple of months ago. This one still works really well. I have no real problems with it at all. So uh, not really looking to upgrade at this stage. Certainly the uh, professional ones are a little bit more expensive, but this thing does the trick. So we'll, we'll keep at it with this one. Now to apply this flocking, uh, you just want to use your watered down PVA glue and just apply this around the edge of these field craters. Uh, you want to make sure that that edge alongside the crater is a little bit varied so you don't want a straight line there. You want to try and sort of creep it up a little in a few areas around the outside of the crater just to make it look better. Now the grass I'm using here is just some cheap static grass I've got. I've mixed a couple of different colors together to get the look I'm going for. And you just want to fairly liberally apply this stuff all over there being careful if you're using this static grass applicator uh, not to electrocute yourself uh, which I have done several times with this thing. It's not too bad, but it is an, uh, a bit of a wake up in the morning <laughs> if, you, if you do tend, if you do end up uh, whacking yourself with this thing. But it's all right. It's fairly safe. I'll say fairly safe. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> it, it is what it is, people. Come on. So anyway, uh, once you've got that on and it's dried, uh, we can uh, start applying some extra details here. So some of these little rocks, uh, little pebbles and bits of gravel that I found out in the yard. I'm just going to glue those down with some PVA glue randomly around the outside. I'm going to use some of these tiny tufts from uh, Game of Grass. Uh, these are really cool. They're really little ones. I'm going to put a few of these around the place as well. Some in the flocking and some up on the outside of the craters. And uh, again, adding a few more rocks and different things out here. I'm going to use a few different colored grass tufts as well. Some from Army Painter and some from Game of Grass just to sort of get some variation here and uh, sort of make this look a little bit more realistic. As you can see, this sort of comes up okay. Now you might want to also apply some of this uh, little gravel and bits of rock into the inside of the craters as well. It does add to it, as uh, gives it a nice uh, varied look and uh, sort of makes it look like it is exploded and there is debris inside. Uh, you could do the same here with this cork board. I didn't for these ones. I'm quite happy with how they look. Here I'm just bringing up this uh, bitumen look on the outside to match my battle mat. So I'm just going in with some differing shades of grey and I'm just going to stipple this onto this cork board uh, just to get it to match up a little bit more with the bitumen 
or road base that I used for the uh, battle mat. So just using craft paints here and I'm just mixing a black and a white starting at very dark and as you can see I've just taken it up another shade just to be a little bit lighter here and just using this big old dirty brush I'm just going to stipple this on all the way around the outside uh, onto all this cork and uh, it does end up looking really good towards the end as you'll see. I'm also going to add a slight brown stippling into this one so just a little bit of uh, raw umber craft paint with a little bit of that grey and I'm going to mix it in together and uh, just to dirty up this bitumen look so it does look a little bit better and like I said makes it a little bit more realistic especially given that it is uh, around side of, on the outside of a bomb crater so now I'm going to use another uh, shade of grey here again quite a bit lighter this one uh, what I'm going to do is actually put a bit of an edge highlight around the top of this bitumen uh, it's fairly roughly applied as you can see I'm just using the edge of that large brush and just kind of slapping it on there so uh, you don't need to be too careful this is terrain and just remember this is rough terrain as well so this is uh, you know a bomb crater so just going around the inside and the outside of these uh, bits of foam board I'm just adding a bit of a highlight just to bring them up a little bit uh, I'm also going to just uh, use that lighter grey and just do a, a really sort of uh, sparse stippling again on there to bring that colour up I felt they were a little bit too dark final highlight here just with a very light light grey again just using the edge of my large brush and just sort of you know smacking this around the edge of these uh, bits of corkboard uh, now I will do this on the inside and the outside of the crater I didn't worry about the lines between uh, each of these pieces of bitumen just on the edges that are exposed on the top and the bottom so uh, fairly quick to do this you know you don't have to be too careful you can see there I, I'm not sort of you know spending a lot of time on this step but it does uh, make a big difference to the to the final uh, look of these so good idea to do this if you can it's just the black and white craft paint that I'm mixing as I go I did this for both of the craters that I made, the same, same colour shades all the way through and they both look fantastic I think. Now to get these craters with a little bit of depth which is hard to do when they can't sort of extend below the, the table uh, that, you're work, that you're playing on, I've got myself some black dry pigment here, I found this at the, craft, at the art store, it's very cheap stuff so um, you know it, it just helps to sort of give that exploded look, uh, you know that burnt explosion uh, in the middle of the crater it does help to you know give that slight perception of depth into it I guess so uh, if you've got some of that on hand it's really handy to do that. You could probably do this in the same way with a bit of a black wash I just have that uh, dry pigment on, in, on hand so it, it worked out really well for this so uh, like I said you could use a wash if you need to. Now here I'm just going to add some debris around the outside of these craters where this uh, bitumen is. Uh, all I'm going to be using for that is just some brown battleground from Army Painter. This is just a, a fairly fine sort of gravel, a uh, little bit better than a sand. I find this stuff works really good. It's great for the scale that I work in so uh, I use this stuff a lot, uh, the little container goes a very long way so I'm just putting some random spots onto these bits of bitumen here where I'm going to sprinkle over this gravel and I'm not filling that those uh, spots of glue up at all, I'm just using very small amounts of that, this uh, brown battleground on those glue spots. I don't want piles of gravel here, I just want some little spots of it here and there where it should sit, be sitting. Adding some rocks and gravel into the inside of your crater is also a good idea gives that sense of extra debris lying around. Lots of stuff has exploded out of here so we want to make sure that we make that look that way uh, for the finished product. So here is uh, these craters now. You can see where those bits of bitumen sort of fold up a little bit at the base. That's so that, that's because it's all flat now. So the Mod Podge and PVA glue help to sort of form those to fit flat on the table surface so long as you weigh them down while that glue's drying. Worked out really well. I like these ones especially. I'm going to make a few more of those. These field craters turned out great as well. The dirt texture I'm using, as I mentioned, it's just dirt from the backyard. Uh, just sifted to make sure there's no leaves and kangaroo shit in there. So, you know, it's not hard to find this stuff and, and make it work for you. Uh, the different coloured grass tufts definitely make it a little bit more realistic as well. And same with those little bits of gravel that I've added here and there. Uh, the black in the middle helps to sell the look overall and uh, I'm really happy with this build. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun to do these ones, I wasn't sure what I was doing when I started but 
Um, look, I'm really happy these have turned out great. I'll be making a few more of them. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Uh, thank you especially to my Patreon supporters. Uh, you guys definitely help me get these materials each week for these videos. Uh, keep me motivated to keep building and, and producing videos. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks very much, everyone. See you next time.